Well, hello there, Eric Griffith here with Mobile Tech Services here in Mobile Tech Studio B. And today I wanna to answer a question that I get at least once a month from other school teachers and other technology directors. It is how in the heck do I prevent students from emailing each other and make it so they can only email the teacher, right? Or a select group of folks, all right? so. Restricting student Gmail delivery is what I'm calling this, all right? So why would you want to do this? There's plenty of reasons. One is maybe there's a legal reason and you're being not asked to do it, but told to do it as a, as a Google admin. That has happened to me before, all right? Um, perhaps you've got a grade level of students that are just not yet mature enough to use Gmail, right? I've always said that using uh, a Chromebook is a privilege, not a right. And actually, using Gmail should be a privilege, not a right. In Google's book, it's actually okay um, to have students under the age of 13 to have email. They just need to be monitored by an adult, is what Gmail officially, is what Google Workspace officially says. So there's not really an age restriction there. Some people feel that there is. If you talk to Google, they say, we're okay with it. You're the school as long as you manage it. So maybe you have some sort of third party application in there that is monitoring what's going on, or maybe you don't. So it's time to disable it, right? In short, we still want students to receive, to receive those emails, but we don't want them to be able to send out any emails to other students or third parties, right? So what we're going to do today within the admin console is create a list for staff and third parties so that they can do this, all right? So if you're a school administrator, if you're a teacher and you've come across this, great. Please forward this on to your Google admin, whoever handles technology within your organization, and I'm gonna walk them through step-by-step -step how to do this, all right? But if you forward this on, be sure to be clear what specifically you want. I want student A to be removed, and I don't want them to email anybody except this person, all right? or I only want student A to be able to email student B, right? This tip will allow them to do that, all right? So what we're gonna do in a second here is log into the Google Admin Console. Then we're gonna go under Apps, Google Workspace Settings for Gmail. Then we're gonna go to Compliance. Then we're gonna restrict delivery. Again, this is going to restrict the delivery to teachers only, as well as third-party services, right? Uh, so before you get started, Heads up, you as the tech admin need to have an approved staff email list. Easiest way to get that is to go into the Google Admin Console and export your users. That's going to give you a list of all your teachers. From there, you can copy and paste that into there, or Google has a feature that will allow you to bulk upload that, and I'll show you where that is. Same with third-party apps. I'm going to give you a list of my two that I suggest, but you may have Huddle or LinkedIn or uh, Pearson or some other third party service that your school district is utilizing and you need them to be able to email those students. All right. So be prepared to get that list as well. All right. We're going to apply it to the appropriate OU. And then you need to also remember as a tech admin every year when we get new staff or maybe anytime you get a new staff member, this needs to be a checklist on your list of items to be able to go in and add a staff member to this list. Otherwise, the students can't email them and they cannot receive emails from that teacher, okay? So very important to do. Lastly, that little announcement icon there, you definitely wanna let your teachers know that you're doing this. Hopefully, you've been asked to do it and then you set a date and say from X period on, it's going to be preventing your students from receiving emails from anybody other than staff, all right? Communication is key, all right? So let's jump into our Google Admin Console, and you can see I have a list right here under Apps. If I zoom in a little bit, it's Apps, Workspace, Settings for Gmail, and Compliance. Once we navigate to there, the next thing you want to do is go to the OU that you want to restrict. In this case, it is called fake students, all right? So I've got my fake students right here and I'm gonna go ahead and enable this. Now, the one thing you wanna remember is if you have it set up where your students are in uh, first grade, second grade, third grade, something like that, you could create a sub OU underneath each one of those and then you could move that student from the third grade sub 
uh, from the third grade OU to that sub OU there, and then apply that restriction to that sub OU. So if you had one student that lost the privilege of email, this is what you could do. You could set it up so just that one student uh, was in there. All right. So in this example, though, I'm going to do it for all the students in my fake student list. We're going to scroll down until we find the setting called restrict delivery. Okay. So right here, it says restrict the domains that your users are allowed to exchange email with. Okay. I'm going to click configure right here. And the first thing it's going to ask you is to name this setting. All right. I'm just going to call it no email. And maybe this, you have to do this for different grade levels, or maybe you are doing this for one organizational unit or grade level, but not another. So you could say third grade or something like that. I'm just going to call it no email period, right? The next thing you're asked to do is create a list. Again, we're creating a list of approved email addresses that the students can send and receive email to and from, okay? So I don't have a list right here available. I need to click create or edit a list. So I lied, I do. I have two that I have already created, but we're going to go ahead and create a new one today. So right down here, it says add address list. I'm going to click add address list and I'll move myself over to this bottom corner here. And it says uh, add a name. So I could call this test, right? Because this is just a test here. Actually, I'll put myself over here. Yep. And then I can add the email addresses. I can add them one by one. So I could put my email address right there. And then as soon as I hit add address right down here, it'll add it to the list. Right here, you want to put this, uh, you want to check this box if the email requires authentication. Most likely it doesn't, so you can uncheck it, all right? So the other thing you can do is if you have a large staff list, is you can click this button right here that says bulk add addresses. When you do this, it's going to say enter the address name, and you can actually just paste all of those in there. The easiest way for me to do this is to jump into my Google Admin Console. And again, I said this earlier, export a list of all those users. Hopefully it's in a Google Sheet or Excel Sheet. You highlight or CSV, whatever it is, highlight that entire cell, copy it, and then paste it right in there. It'll all go in there. It's beautiful. It'll work super easy. Once you click Add, Again, you can say require sender or not. I normally uncheck it. Once you click add, they will just all magically appear in there and you can add or delete them one by one. Once you've created that, you'll hit save. So then you've created, successfully created a list, right? So you can see over here, I have two lists. I have a staff list. You call it your approved staff list. You could call it, um, you know, maybe you have it divided by grade levels, however you do it. Uh, then I have a third party list. So you could even break this down to sixth grade approved list, seventh grade approved list. You can get as detailed as you want, but I mostly deal with smaller schools uh, anymore. So I just have one whole staff list and one whole approved party list. So what's in my approved third SAR uh, approved party? What's in my third party approved service list, right? If I click edit here, um, I have google.com and googlemail.com. Those are two that I've added in there that you kind of need so that they can send and receive uh, emails from those. You might have uh, no reply at LinkedIn or no reply at um, Huddle or something like that, or just huddle.com, you know, whatever third-party service, this is where you want to go in and maintain that. It's also important to then go back and say, hey, administration teachers, if you decide to sign up for any other third-party applications, those students are not going to receive any emails from them until you let me know. Once you let me know, I'll then add it to this list and then we're good. Okay. So again, communication is key in this, especially if you have a problem and you're trying to fix it, they won't remember to do this. So it's something that you want to often remind them of. Okay. So once you've created this list, you can actually just close this screen here. And then what we can do is we're back to that uh, restriction where it says add um, add a setting. I'm going to click use existing list and then the list of my two or my two lists come right up there and I can just click on those and select them and then click close. And then the next part is once I've selected my approved lists, it says what's my rejection message. Okay, this is where you could say emailing this person has been prevented from your building administrator. Uh, please email, could be your principal, uh, for if they just told you, hey, 
this needs to happen, or it could be yourself, all right? You can include their name and email address, especially if you don't want to receive the email about it, all right? So include that information in there. And the last part, which is the most important, it is right down here. It says bypass this setting for internal messages. You absolutely have to uncheck that. If you do not uncheck that, dogs and cats living together, mass hysteria. What's going to happen is everything that you just set up is all for naught, okay? They'll be able to email each other internally. So uncheck this setting and then your restriction will work, okay? Once you're done there, I'm going to have to hit refresh because I zoomed in and it won't let me zoom out. Once you're done there, you have to go back down and then you'll just hit approve. So again, you'll hit save down there at the bottom and it should be good. So notice if I have any other uh, email restrictions in there, once it's created, uh, I can go ahead and turn it on and off. So it looks very similar to this edit, dis disable or delete, right? I can go in and turn those on and off at any time. And again, it depends on how you set it up. If it's under your students or if it's under your, uh, in this case, it's under fake students uh, for me, but wherever you have set it up, this is where you would go back and configure it, okay? The other thing I really like is if I go into configure and I go into this create user list, I'm going to go into uh, this link right here. So um, it's manage address list type list one, right? I'm going to copy this and I'm going to paste this in my uh, to-do list as a yearly reminder so that as soon as I click this list, it takes me right to this. And that way it'll be a good reminder. You could also set a reoccurring calendar event um, for this to happen so that you can easily and quickly get right back to that setting. Okay. So once you have that set and saved, you are good to go. You hit save and then none of your kids will be able to email each other. Or again, depending on how you've set that up, they'll be restricted. They'll receive that notification. All right. So I hope this setting worked out for you. And if you have any questions, feel free to add them in the comments and I'll be happy to answer them. If you're a student and you just came across this email, I'm sorry. I'm sure you'll find other ways to get around our filters and still communicate. You always have your personal devices. All right. So thank you very much for sticking around. And I hope that you have a griftastic day. Thanks. Ah, out of coffee. Hey, speaking of out of coffee, I'm happy to announce we have another solution that we provide here at Mobile Tech, and it's called Pathways. It's a excellent, a great educational professional development package that we have come up with here with a ton of different presenters. And what we've done is we've put together these online courses that you can take, and then you can print out or digitally turn in your certificates to those folks who keep track of content hours or uh, contact hours for your school, you can turn that in. And, and if your school provides contact hours, you're good to go. You can take the courses for free. I have a couple of free courses up there now, uh, or you can pay for them as well. They're put on by a lot of great uh, professional development folks around the country, uh, two of which, uh, Stephanie Howell and Eric Kurtz, both awesome Google educators uh, that are in our circuit and many more to come. We have 30 plus courses right now. And uh, the one that I like the most that's out right now is, of course, is the one that I did. It's called How to Catch Sneaky Students on Their Chromebooks. So it's an awesome course filled with my brand of humor. So if you like it, go ahead and watch it and uh, get yourself a certificate. And if you decide to take any of the courses uh, for on the course and they're they're paid they're normally 24 25 bucks you can knock 25 percent off by using the promo code uh coffee okay and that's what the promo code will be is coffee and you type that in and you can get 25 percent off any of the other courses all right so i hope this helped you out and i hope you watch some courses and you get a good laugh and you get some education all right so again eric griffith mobile tech services Follow me on the Twitters at Mr. Griftastic. Thank you and have a Griftastic day. Bye.